Hey everyone, welcome inside the T-Mobile Arena. It's the Triple M Show today. Megan O'Leary alongside Mark Ramondi and Mike Coppinger. You guys, this is exciting. We just had a weigh-in in, in T-Mobile that was sold out, basically. The building was almost at capacity for a weigh-in. We've seen this before with Conor McGregor, but Mark, it has to feel good to be back. Okay, so I have to be really honest with you, Megan. Mm -hmm. So uh, the promo that played before Dustin and Conor came yes. out for the weigh-ins, I... Look, I, it it warmed my my cold my cold heart, and it, it my 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 jaded my jadedness went away, and I actually got goosebumps because it's finally here, right? The trilogy fight, the one that we've all been waiting for, Poirier McGregor three, they were there. The promo was incredible, and uh, the fans, which was missing from the fight in Abu Dhabi, yes. of course, back in January, and has been missing, uh, you know, for McGregor fights since the Cowboy fight in January 2020. So, extremely excited about this fight, absolutely. Mike, have you been to a McGregor weigh-in before? I have, yeah. Okay, and them. how does this compare, you think, to other ones? I think it feels really similar. I think Connor is still the biggest star in combat sports, and but he's going to need a win tomorrow night to keep that going. I mean, look, if he loses, is he still a star? Absolutely. But it's going to lose just a little bit of shine. He needs to win, and win convincingly, I believe, if he wants to keep this status as the number one top dog in all of combat sports. I mean, Mark, would you agree with that? He definitely needs to win to, to further his legacy and, and maintain that. I think even if he loses, he's still probably the biggest star in combat sports, mm -hmm. but two in, losing two in a row, it's it, whatever that next fight will be, would be interesting if he loses, but certainly this is a, a pivotal fight for his career. So let's talk about game plan, right? If you're if you're Conor McGregor and you're going into this rematch with Dustin Poirier, you know, uh, there's an interesting stat. He was actually outstruck by Dustin, in the, if you combine the first two fights. But he had a lot of powerful blows in both meetings, certainly the one where he knocked Dustin out. But in the second fight, you, you could see Dustin was rattled a little bit. But if you're Conor, what's the game plan to ensure success? Well, I guess, I mean, the first thing he has to do is figure out how to negate those leg kicks, the calf kicks that... Poirier used so effectively in the first fight because really I mean if, if not for that who knows what we're talking about right now because those those calf kicks really were to me the difference in the fight because the first round McGregor was landing those big left hands he was landing combinations he was hurting Dustin Poirier hurt me also in the second round yeah but if you if you talk to coaches and fighters about those calf kicks they say it takes three clean ones and you're really feeling yep. it. Your leg feels dead. You can't. You, you take a step, and you can't even feel like where you know where you're landing with the leg. And McGregor took more than three clean of uh, shots uh, from Poirier of those of those calf kicks. So he has to negate them. Whether it's checking, whether it's evading, being more mobile, figure out a way to not eat so many clean calf kicks. That's got to be number one on his agenda. Yeah, and Mike, if you're Connor, do you feel like the fans are almost an additional tool within your toolbox? Absolutely. I think that's maybe the number one key to this fight. Abu Dhabi, no fans, controlled environment. Conor McGregor, let's face it, who feeds off the fans more than him? You could tell how much he loves this. And that entrance tomorrow, when Biggie hits, I think it's going to be electric. <laughs> and I think Conor, it's really going to carry him to victory, I believe. Yeah, okay. So it, so on the flip side, we talk about what Conor needs to do. Mike, what do you think are the keys to victory for Dustin Poirier? He obviously got it done last fight, but he's not a guy that's going to walk away from a win saying, all right, that was all good. There's nothing to learn. Moving on. I think Dustin really has to avoid those big shots from Connor. Obviously, when they met the first time, Connor finished him in like 90 seconds. And then in the second fight, I thought Connor had him pretty hurt in that first round. So D Dustin weathered the storm last time, but I thought Connor kind of let him off the hook a little bit. I want to see Poirier be more aggressive, maybe. He has the confidence now after finishing him and avoid those big shots. You, you had mentioned something about, you know, the killer instinct, instinct excuse me, of Connor McGregor. I mean, do you feel like it's missing? Do you feel like it's returned? Do you feel like it ever went somewhere? I mean, where do you stand on that? Because it's easy for us to, to sit on the sidelines and say things about it, but when you really observe the fights and how he's been all week long, I mean, what sense of that do you get? <laughs> it's it's so hard because you see like the the Twitter experts, right? And they're you know, they're analyzing everything. You know, they're 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 looking at pictures from McGregor's weigh ins from like three years <laughs> ago to, you know, weigh in today and you know, they're they're contrasting Connor's press conference performances. S that stuff could mean nothing or it could mean a lot. Exactly. And we just and we really just don't know standing hours away from from this fight right now what it actually means. I do think that the McGregor who is talking trash, who's who's more intense, who who at least feels more motivated is a more focused Conor McGregor because it seemed like against Poirier back in January, 
the Mr. Nice Guy role is just not, that's just not Conor McGregor. That's not the guy that we've known now for so many years. And I think that at least going back, even if it's just for himself, you know, not even, not, I don't, I'm not sure if Dustin Poirier is really phased by any of any of the trash talk, but if it just helps Conor himself, that could be, that could be a key in and, in and of itself. Yeah, what do you think, Mike? I mean, I, I think Conor, again, having that energy. I mean, I saw something when fans and media were saying, oh, it's great hearing all the action now. We don't need fans back. <laughs> no, wrong. Like, how awesome was this today being at the Wayne? How awesome is it going to be tomorrow night when, you know, we have 20,000 screaming fans, mostly for Connor? I know they're not coming from Ireland, but Connor has plenty of fans here, too. So when it comes to the killer instincts, you know, when you have your guy hurt and you hear the fans and the roar, maybe that's going to really push him to go and step on the gas a little bit. Yeah, and you mentioned step on the gas. There are very few things you can control in a fight. But to some degree, you can control your level of preparedness with your cardio. And that's something that athletes really focus on. But it's sometimes what gets left to the back burner if things are hard. They both have the ability to at least control their preparedness for their cardio in this one. Do you think they're going to need it? Do you think this goes 25 minutes and it goes, you know, hard rounds for all five rounds it's that's that's one of the more intriguing questions i think to me megan about this fight is is really just what it looks like because let's let's talk about when when mcgregor fought nate diaz it was a similar circumstance he got finished in the second round in that fight got finished the second round against dustin poirier second fight against diaz against diaz went the distance and mcgregor was able to was not the most clean performance from a cardio perspective but he gutted it out he was able to figure it out late in that fight and win the fight and, and seal it in the fourth round after really being being tired, but he still had enough in his tank. If it if that happens again, and, and the cardio does remain a really big question for McGregor, I think it probably always will, but it isn't like he hasn't done things to improve. I mean, after after the first DS fight, he brought in coaches Colin Byrne and Dr. Julian Dalby. He's he's made his, his uh, cardiovascular and strength conditioning program much more da data, analytical, yes. the McGregor Fast program and everything like that. So it isn't like he's not, this is not for lack of trying. It isn't like McGregor's resting on his laurels in that degree. So he is trying to get his cardio better. Whether or not that actually manifests itself in the fight, we, d we don't know. But certainly that's something that he's worked very, very hard on. Yeah, and I think, I think people forget that Nate Diaz fight, right? They forget that, okay, we, we saw them go back and forth, never taking a second off, and they were able to do it. Mike, when you really look at it and you see this main event as uh, a, a trilogy in history, and especially within history of combat sports, I mean, where does it stand for you? I mean, it's got to be up there. Connor's one of the biggest athletes in combat sports ever. I mean, when I think, I think of boxing, you think of, you know, that was four fights, but Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez – those were four incredible fights, most of them here in Vegas. And that's the one I would really compare it to the most because these were two, even though they were short fights, they were really fun fights. But I think the third one's going to be the best. I, I, I might agree with you on that. I think, like, between the buildup and this being the first fight back in Las Vegas at full capacity for the UFC, I think there's a lot to it. Mark, what about you? Where does this sort of lie in the history of trilogies of combat sports? Definitely high, and I think the reason is because the stakes just feel so enormous in this fight because you could make the argument that in some ways this is the biggest fight of each man's career. And what I mean by that is not only are they getting – a title shot with the win, which Dana White has said repeatedly in the, in the build up to this fight. But there is a certain legacy factor there for Dustin Poirier because beating Conor McGregor twice is just enormous for someone. Conor is the biggest star in the history of this company, in the history of the sport. So, in some ways, w beating McGregor twice is bigger than the, t the title, in some ways, in some ways. And for McGregor, he's already done everything. He's already won two titles. He's the first person to ever hold two titles in two different divisions yeah. at the same time. He's fought Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> I mean, which is you know he, here you know which we no don't one talk thought about that enough, no I one know. no one thought that was even possible the fact that he could even do that which I, I would argue that he has almost even started this novelty boxing craze by fighting Floyd Mayweather, but there are a lot of question marks about McGregor now at 32 years old only one win since 2016 so for him it's like well win this fight and then if he doesn't win then what the stakes I think are just tremendously high and that's why. To me, it's got to be one of the best trilogies, at least in UFC history. Yeah, and everything always rides on your next fight, right? So it's always what's the fight in front of you. And this one is certainly huge for both men. We'll circle back to the main event because um, I'm not letting you off the hook. I'm getting your <laughs> predictions. Oh boy. But I want to talk about this co-main because it is a tremendous matchup. Um, it's one of those stylistically we love to see. And I know it's not traditional karate versus traditional jujitsu. <laughs> I understand that. They're both very well-rounded mixed martial artists. But it's fun to kind of sell it that way, Mark. 100%. I mean, it's uh, because 
it, it feels almost like the old school UFC where you had the style versus style clash, where you had the karate versus the wrestling and the boxing, you know, Art Jimerson with his one glove. It may not quite be that, but it's the 2021 version of that. Gilbert Burns is one of the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu performers in the UFC. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is the best, probably the best karate performer we've ever seen in the UFC. And it's really going to depend on which style overrides the other in the fight. And that's kind of one of the cool things about MMA, and that's why we love it so much. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Mike, when you look at this co-main event, what do you like the most about this matchup? I like that it's really two fun personalities. I mean, obvi obviously we all love Wonder Boy, but he's 38 now. I mean, if he loses at this point, you know, this could be like a last chance saloon for him. So I want to see if he can really capitalize here and put himself in that running for a shot at Kamaru Usman. Yeah, and I think they're the two two of the nicest guys in the game, right? We're going to be so happy for whoever wins, so bummed out for whoever doesn't get their hand raised. But it's also interesting because... Is the, is the nicest MF belt on the line in this fight, <laughs> Megan? You know, I'm not sure. The I don't NMF? think so, but, you know, we always like to have a surprise in the show, so okay. we never know. Yeah, I think I think we can say that. Maybe you could carry the belt out. How about the interim NMF title? Okay, Maybe okay. that could be no, on I the think line. We're, we're throwing those around Thank lately, you. so, okay. <laughs> You said that. <laughs> I, I did. I did. Um, in terms of, of this co-main event, though, Stephen Thompson, with a win, could be the next to face Kamaru. He's one of the few, uh, you know, in the top ten of that division who haven't faced Kamaru. Although, I want to recognize that Stephen himself said, listen, I want to fight Kamaru next. However, I think Leon Edwards should get the shot. And I do think that's really interesting. But in the landscape of 170 pounds, what do you guys think? Who do you believe will be next? Do you think with a stellar performance, it's Stephen Thompson? It definitely could be. Uh, I, s I still think it's Colby Covington's fight to lose. Leon Edwards, of course, is, is right there. And, I mean, the guy has done everything possible to get a title shot. The last guy that he lost to was Kamara Usman, and that was a close fight a very long time ago. Yeah. But Stephen Thompson, again, Usman, like you said, Megan, Usman's already beaten Gilbert Burns. He's already beaten Jorge Masvidal twice. He's already beaten Colby Covington. Yep. He's already beaten Leon Edwards. Stephen Thompson is a fresh opponent. So certainly, if Thompson goes out there, if Wonder Boy goes out there and styles on Gilbert Burns, I think a case could definitely be made for him to be the next guy. Yeah. Would you like to see that? Is that a matchup that excites you because we haven't seen those two face off, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime you talk about fresh matchups, I think that's the most important thing. I mean, rematches are fun. We're getting a great trilogy fight in the main event, but nothing beats a fresh matchup, the unexpected, the unknown. And again, Wonder Boy Thompson, I, if not against Usman, what about against Jorge Masvidal? You could have the, you know, the, the BMF against the MMF. So, <laughs> yeah, two belts on the line. And I, and I would, I would even argue that uh, if you're talking about matchups, Wonder Boy is one of the hardest matchups out there for anybody, including Kamaru Usman. That's a compelling fight if it does go down. I hope to see it at some point. If it's not next, I hope to see it down the road. I agree. I hope to see it down the road at some point if it isn't next. Um, I want to ask you guys on this entire UFC 264 card, is there a name or is there a storyline or a matchup that stands out to you that you think, all right, with all the attention on the main event, might be flying under the radar? I, I know, Mike, uh, we touched upon this off camera, but what sticks out to you about this card? I mean, I love Sugar Sean O'Malley. <laughs> I've heard him being compared to Prince Nassim Mohamed, of course, the, the great boxer. Oh, yeah. He's a showman. Obviously, the colorful hair stands out. But when you watch him, this guy's a stylist. I mean, who has a style like Sugar Sean O'Malley? He's so unique. He's a sh I think he's going to be a big star one day, and he's really on the brink right now. He just needs the win. Obviously, it's not, it's not going to come tomorrow night, but it might come before the end of the year. Interesting. He's a stylist, and I think he has a very good stylist. I mean, the hair, the glasses, the whole, the whole ensemble. Truly. I'm a big, I'm a big fan <laughs> of the whole, the whole Sean O'Malley vibe. But uh, there's no storyline in this fight. But <laughs> the Michelle Pereira versus Nico Price fight. I, I mean, that so just glad has you're mentioning that. that just that is just like a, an abundance of violence waiting to happen with those two guys. They're two of the most exciting finishers in the sport. Michelle Pereira is out here at weigh-ins doing a backflip off of the scale at terrified the Mobile me. Arena. Terrified me. Yeah, I think terrified the the Octagon girls behind him were scared because he he went so far, but then he did it. Then he did a kip up, and it's like this guy. Whenever he is on your television screen, you have to watch him. He's a must-watch. So uh, to me, that fight, Nico Price is one of the most creative finishers in the UFC. So I mean, that one. Look, I, I want to see McGregor and Poirier, of course, but that one, I'm, I had that one circled on my, on my bout sheet. I mean, that's, that's going to be an amazing fight. Listen, I'm giving my opinion. No one asked for it, but I'm going to give it because I the fight opinion, immediately maybe. after that also intrigues me between Carlos Condit and Max Griffin. Of course. I just absolutely love the fact that Max told us earlier this week he was a young kid watching the WEC, and he saw this guy walking back and forth from the camera, kind of snarling into the lens before he fought, and he thought, I want to be like that guy. And now he gets to face that guy. And I just think it's such a full circle 
circle moment, but also shout out to Carlos Condit for like we talked about earlier today, s remaining on top of the game for so long. I mean, he's still so dangerous in there. We still love to see him. So that is your main event uh, for the prelims on ESPN is where you can catch that. And don't forget the pay-per-view is at ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Um, that is your only place to watch UFC 264. All right, gentlemen, uh, no pressure, but pressure. I need to know your co-main event picks, and then we'll get into your main event. Co-main event? Yes. Uh, I like uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson by decision. I think that keeps it on the outside. I think Burns will be be good. I think he'll win a round or two, but I think Wonderboy with that, just uh, he's a tough puzzle to solve on the feet because of his of his uh, karate style and just his, his tactics. I think that he'll get the win by decision. I'm going to go with Gilbert Burns. He's shown really good power. He drops Kamaru Usman. And I know he lost that fight, but I think he's riding high confidence now. Wonder Boy's getting up there in age, and I have to go against Mark, so. <laughs> Contrarian I love that. That's really what this is about, <laughs> right? Um, all right, main event. I I'd love to hear your pick of who and how and maybe why. Uh, I'm, I have to pick Conor McGregor, and I, and I, and I think it's because I, 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 watched, I watched that fight that second fight with Poirier back from January, and uh, I did an article for ESPN.com, not to, not to plug, but also to plug. And I spoke, to, I, spoke to, I spoke to a dozen coaches and analysts about this fight and McGregor in particular. And some of, some of the, sometimes the, the exterior views by people outside the sport are vastly different than the internal views by people in the sport who really, really know the sport. And in talking to coaches and analysts about this fight and about McGregor in, in specific, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot he needs to fix. And, and if he just makes some little tweaks here and there, he can absolutely win this fight, and the second fight was winnable. He very well could have won that fight. Uh, Poirier was wobbled in the first round. McGregor didn't go in for the kill for whatever reason, whether that he, he was fearing the cardio or, or whatever, but he had a chance to win that fight in the first round, didn't do it. That certainly could replay itself in this fight. Poirier has been in a lot of wars. We've seen him. I mean, he gets rocked and wobbled in a lot of fights, and McGregor has that, that one-punch knockout power with his left hand, and it can be a game-changer, and... I, I think McGregor, I think he finishes. I do. Interesting. Mike, you, are you on Team Mark here? Are you picking <laughs> the same, or are we going opposite again? I'm going Conor McGregor. And, uh, you know, Mark's talking about his cardio. He gave him the plug from McGregor fast, which I'm sure Conor appreciates. <laughs> but let's not forget, Conor's been riding that bicycle everywhere. If that's not going to help the endurance, I don't know what will. He's been showing it all over Instagram. <laughs> Who knows how many miles he's going. <laughs> I think the cardio is going to be there. More importantly, he's going to have the confidence in the cardio. And, again, he knocked... Poirier out in the first fight. He hurt him badly in the second fight, let him off the hook. What I want to see more from Connor, though, is in that first fight, he landed an equilibrium shot right behind the ear that kind of finished Poirier. I want to see him place those shots more, and he set it up with a really nice feint. He was feinting the jab more. I want to see the feints with the jab, keep Poirier guessing, and then go for the kill this time. But I think Connor McGregor by finish. All right, you heard him. Our experts have the same prediction here, Conor McGregor in our main event. I predict that we will all be watching it on ESPN Plus for UFC 264, which goes down right here inside T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Thank you so much for joining the Three Paisans today. So maybe we'll maybe we'll start our own thing, right? All right, Arrivederci. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.